welcome back to Reviews with Elaine, because I have opinions. Today's opinions will be about Prosper's Demon by K.J. Parker. Okay, so this is officially the first book I read in my uh, project of reading books to try to find comps for my manuscript. Uh, someone suggested this author, and I knew absolutely nothing about him. I'd never even heard of him. And something about the book description made me think that this author might have a similar mix of light and playful with more serious tones as my writing has. Uh, so I scanned through his more recent books and decided on this one primarily because it was hella short. Which is also, by the way, the reason I read it first, because I wanted to get moving on the project quickly and I felt like reading the novella first would help me feel that way. And yeah, it is hella short. And on that note, this review might be pretty short too. Uh, but hopefully, by the time that this video, this review video comes out, I will have already released my comp reading video. But in case I haven't, or if you haven't seen this one, no, I don't think this works as a comp for me. But, what is it? Uh, so this is a novella about an exorcist in a world that is not unlike Renaissance Europe. Our protagonist, who never gets named, uh, was born with the ability to see and expel demons. He is licensed by the church to save possessed people for money, but objectively he does it primarily because he feels compelled to do so. Uh, he just enjoys the process. There's this one demon he has a long history with, and when he figures out that his old enemy is likely to possess the heir to the dukedom, he is determined to do something about it. The boy is supposed to be raised by a true genius, a man named Prosper who paints, designs, composes, writes tracks on mathematics, and basically does every brilliant thing ever. Uh, Prosper's idea is to raise the perfect philosopher king. The demon's plan is probably much darker. So this is one of those stories that I am very glad it is as short as it is. First, because I don't really think there's enough meat on this story to fill a full novel. No, that's not actually quite right. I revoke that statement. Uh, there would have been plenty of meat if we had spent more time learning about our protagonist's history and life story, about the continuing conflict between the protagonist and the demon, the nature of how they relate, because they clearly have some form of relation. Uh, we could have gotten another 50 pages out of the philosophical discussions between Prosper and our protagonist alone. Uh, we could have seen more of the protagonist's travel and work, I think there is a seed of a fascinating, much longer work in the brief mention of the demon growing up alongside our protagonist, but overall, most of that, I'm just happy I didn't have to push through. I frankly don't think I could have handled 300 pages in this protagonist's mind. This is a really close first-person perspective book, which means we are right up in his thoughts the entire time, which is also why the author gets away with never giving the protagonist an actual name. But he's not a likable character! Hell, one of the first things he tells us is that we are not going to like him, and he was right. I strongly disliked the character. Uh, he seems to lack all empathy. He's cold, uncaring, and doesn't care what we think about him. He's not witty enough to make him a fun, arrogant anti-hero. Because he is so disconnected and unempathetic to other humans, and we are directly in his mind, only one other human rises to the level of character in this book and our hero doesn't see him in an exceptionally flattering light either, which leaves the reader sort of stranded by ourselves in the mind of someone who is sort of detestable. Seeing just this much of him, uh, he's fascinating. Like, objectively, I enjoyed the hundred pages I have of this book, but I just don't want to hang out with this guy for more than a hundred pages. Which means that overall, even though it's a very short book, it never feels rushed, except for one section. There's one bit in this novella that I feel like just needed more words to fill it in. And that was our protagonist's journey from realizing his demon had pulled a prank on him. And uh, I just want you to know, I'm using the book's phrasing there because no, this is not a prank. Uh, but the intellectual and physical journey between the prank to the protagonist realizing the demon was going to possess the prince, it felt like we were skipping just a bit too much? And that would have been a good place to show us more of the protagonist's character and backstory and history. But I get the feeling that the author didn't want to do that, that we skip over that because we don't want to get to know the character too much that early on. 
Uh, but this was a really easy, smooth read. Other than the occasional word choice, there were objectively a few words thrown in that sort of felt like, for a lack of a better word, they're in a much higher reading level than the rest of the book. And it felt like they were there to show off how educated the protagonist was, which fit the character, but was a bit annoying. Which objectively also fits the character, because I feel like this character would be happy to annoy me. Uh, but overall, it mostly kept to a non-archaic, not difficult language with relatively simple syntax. The kind of reading that I like, that's smooth, easy, that, yeah, you gotta think about, but you're thinking about what the page is telling you, not about what is directly on the page. Uh, though amazingly for a tiny-ass book, there is a bit too much repetitive language. And, like, part of this repetitive language was specifically feeding into and demonstrating a specific theme, but I felt like there was just a bit more of it than was absolutely necessary to get the point across. But overall, the word coming to my mind when it comes to the writing of this book is smarmy. Uh, the book reads as aggressively male, and I can't explain why. Like, I wish I could tell you what about these words made it feel like it was so clearly written by a man that I wanted to just be like, yep, that's a guy. Uh, and, like, yeah, there is something about the fact that the dehumanization of people is something that I tend to associate with bad men writing women, but this book is not dehumanizing women any more than it's dehumanizing everyone. So that is a different thing, but I'm wondering if that's the association in my brain that made me go, yes, this reads as very male. Uh, but also, it's a book that, like, uh, yeah, the, one of the demons is vaguely gendered female, but otherwise there are no female characters in this book. Uh, the ending was satisfying, which I was really worried about in the pages leading up to the ending. Like, as the book got smaller and smaller left to read, I was going, I'm not sure how this is going to have a satisfying ending. Uh, and I really wasn't sure exactly what it was building to. And I was really afraid we were going to get to a really anticlimactic moment, and no! This book does not do that, and like short stories and novellas often feel really anticlimactic to me, but this one ends with a bang, and it's both emotional and thematically fulfilling. Uh, it's actually somewhat surprisingly well-shaped considering how little time is devoted to the actual climax in this book. Like, honestly, of the hundred pages, I think maybe one is the climax? Uh, but this book definitely is playing with philosophy, questions of morality, what ends justify what means, violence in the defense of good, beauty and art, and how evil affects people. Uh, there are some really interesting ideas in here about the idea of evil as outside versus inside, uh, humans versus inhuman, and yeah, there's just a lot of really interesting things going on in this book. I can actually think of at least four people that I think would absolutely love this book. But personally, I'm glad it was only 100 pages. At this length, I can enjoy it. Any longer, and it would probably have burned through my interests, my goodwill, and my willingness to keep reading. Uh, but overall, not bad. Just not really for me. And more importantly for the project I was reading it for, not a comparable title to my writing.